pastors, priests, bishops who don't who believe in the evolution, uh, in the theory of Darwin. For example, who say uh, the, the 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 story of Adam and Eve is only a legend, like this. But this was not the topic. Other topics. So they say, for example, I had a discussion with a priest about Trinity, Trinity and I mentioned to him some. Uh, contradictions in the Bible and he said to me yeah there are contradictions in the Bible for example he, he mentioned also one he said yeah the names of the apostles are in the in the, uh, in the, uh, in the uh, um, gospels are different he mentioned but it's no problem you know but for me at this time when he said confirmed that there are mistakes and he believed this as a minister or as a priest I said to myself how come I can believe in a book where a priest or a minister is confirming that there are some mistakes? So, even right now I would give you the advice, for example, for non-Muslims, also for Muslims, if you have the Bible, you can, for example, look at Matthew 27 verse 4. It's written there, it's written there that Judah, who told the Jews and uh, to told the Jews where they can find Jesus to capture him that he that he died why because of suicide he got money from this uh, because he told them where G G Jesus were according to the Bible and he took this money and he said to the to the people to the Jews to this Pharisee he said to them you know I don't want the money anymore you know it's it's not good that I did this he has a bad feeling about it. And they say, what? We don't want your money. And he takes the money and throws it into the temple. And then he goes away and makes suicide by hanging himself. You understand me upstairs? Okay. Then afterwards, in the book of Acts, A'mal wa Rusul bil in chapter 1 verse 18, the, top, the story is totally different. The story is totally different because he had not make, uh, made tauba. You know that he said, "Oh, I'm sorry. I, uh, it was better if I don't do it." No, he takes the money and buys from this money a field. And on this field, he goes in front and he falls down, and his uh, stomach goes like this, and he dies. So it's for me that two at least two con main contradictions for example if you go to the Old Testament I don't want to hurt anybody I just mentioned this and I think you have to understand me as a non-Muslim, as a Christian and this is for me a clear contradiction if there is a clear contradiction my solution or my thinking was that then this book cannot be a trustful book a book that I can trust in. Why? Because I thought, now what, what, I cannot know what was written by human beings and what was written by God. Or what was written by uh, uh, people who, who were inspired by, uh, by God. Where do I know this from? I don't know. So, I left this religion. And I believe me, at the beginning, it was painful for me. It was not like, yeah, okay, now I leave it. No, it was painful for me. It was like, you know, you believed in God and now you are in doubt. You know, if you don't believe in God or you have doubt about the existence of God, it's like, you know, you have no hope. What will happen afterwards? You are in the darkness now. So, what did I do afterwards? I was around 14 years old. It's a long time ago. What did I do afterwards? So, I lived a normal life like every young guy in Germany but I of course I was interested in boxing I want to be the champion and trained and everything you know and there were some important details that happened you know with, uh, in, uh, in, in, when I was 15 years old I was in the German championship and I became uh, number two there and afterwards I, was, uh, I went to a boarding school you know, Germany was divided between east part and west part. 
And in the east part, maybe you know it, they were very uh, motivated for sports, and they were, uh, you know, sports had a very high, uh, high um, status there. So, um, I went to a boarding school in East Berlin, you know, it was now all uh, one Germany, but it was still there that there were the trainers from the east side and so on. And Germany was, for example, in the 1988 Olympics in Seoul, it was the last, last Olympics with East and West Germany, divided. I think, uh, when I remember right, East Germany, the GD, uh, GDR, German Democratic Republic, they were the second or the third place after Russia, as uh, Soviet Union at this time, and USA. But I think even they were at this Olympics, they were the second place after Russia, I don't, uh, after Soviet Union. I don't remember anymore. But at least the third place. They were very much stressing on sports. You know, that even in the, in the kindergarten, you know, there came trainers, coach to the kindergarten and they looked, oh this is a small guy, maybe he's good for ice skating or something or gymnastics, oh this is a tall guy, maybe this is, he's good for basketball or uh, something like this, you know. So they always looked, so they began in kindergarten to look who can be a good sportsman for what, for what, uh, for what sport. So I went there on the boarding school and it was still the system of a lot of my uh, my friends, they were still grow, they grew up in this East German system, you know, like, and in this system, the religion had actually almost no, no value, because it's influenced by Karl Marx, communist, and we know all that, uh, you know, religion is for them nothing, because they're atheists. And so most people, they were atheists. And I, I lost the belief in, in Christianity, but I didn't like it that the, most people, they were atheists. And, uh, you know, and I saw the lack of relationship to God and the relationship to other people, you know, how to have to behave to other people, how you have to help. You know, I saw a lack there. So, why I mention this, I mention this, uh, this to, because there's also a detail what made me afterwards think, think about religions, about the truth in religions. And of course, at this time, you know, I was living like a normal guy in the West, you know, going from there to there, and I was very, you know, always thinking sport, 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 sport. I was later on in the national team of Germany, in the amateurs and so. And then also, when I came back, after I made this Shahada uh, Thanawiya, it's like A-level in, in Britain, I don't know how you, uh, what it is in, in America, There's a high school, uh, yes, after I came out from high school, I went back to my hometown and I began as a professional boxer in a very famous um, stable there. It's, uh, the, the, there were also some world champions. For example, the world champion now, Valuyev, he was world champion. You know, uh, Waluyev, the heavyweight world champion, he's, he's also from the same manager who was my manager, Wilfried Sauerland is his name. And, you know, I began there to train with the trainer, his name is Uli Wegner. You can see this all in internet. He is the trainer of some world champions like now Arthur Abraham, the former middleweight champion, and before Sven Otke, Markus Bayer, all world champions, or Trost, my Olympic gold medalist in Barcelona. So it, I began there, and at the same time, I began with civil service. In Germany, after high school, you have to choose between army, you go like one year or eleven or ten months to army or to civil service. And I chose the civil service because I wanted to make my boxing training in Cologne and when you go to army, they send you to any place in Germany, I want to be with my family. So this was the reason. And from this civil service I benefited a lot. Why? Because you know, our job was it to bring food to older people, to elderly people, who cannot cook for themselves. You know, and you have to realize, you know, a lot of people, they always look to the West, they say, oh, in the West, look how nice it is, all people are happy. This is what you are seeing in the TV. In Germany, for example, it's one of the richest countries in Europe, 
every 48 minutes as a suicide. And you see, for example, that older people are often sent to, to old people's houses because the family is not caring for them. You know, like in the Islamic environment, it's always like this, you know, that the old people get a kind of more respect. Why? Why is this? Because our life in Islam, our vision of life is different. Because you don't think like, yo, I'm living from A to B. Of course, not all people in the West are thinking like this. But a lot. You see, you're not, you're not thinking like, I'm living from A to B, 50, 60, 70, 80 years, and the purpose of my life is to get a lot of money, or to have fun, or something like this. So, when there's an old man or old woman in my family, you know, say, in my way. I want to go two times a year, I want to go to holidays. What will I do with them? So the best is, and then the Satan comes to you and gives you a nice picture. The best is you send him to old people's house. So a lot of old people, then they can play together with, uh, you know, Scott or something like this. Yeah, it's like this. And a lot of people are sending to this house, they are full packed. And who is not, who will not be sent to this house, I saw them. They are in their house, a lot of them, they cannot cook for themselves. So we had to go to these houses every day. We had a list. Mr. Müller, Mr. Meyer, Mr. Schmidt, typical German names or whatever. And we go from house to house. Ding, ding. Yeah, hello. Good morning. What's cooking? Everything all right? Here's the food. Like this. So, he... And you know, you see the people, these old people, they have nothing. What are they saying to you? Oh, how is the weather today and what's happening? The weather, the weather, every day, the weather, it's now a nice weather today, it's rainy weather, it's hot today, it's cold today. Always like this, you know, they want to grab you, you know, yet that you just speak five minutes to them. You know, it's like prison. Prison in your own home. You know, they just want to, you know, he has just the TV and you, when you come every day and bring him the food. And then you see this, then... You know, you have to think. Look, this life. One day you will be also like him. You will maybe be old. You will maybe not die before, before the 70s, 80s, 90s. You will maybe be old. You also living like this guy, like this woman, poor woman. And there I realized two things. First of all, <laughs> because I had also Muslim friends, but it was not a direct reason why I accepted Islam. But I was thinking about the family life, also in Islam, because I informed myself in this time also about Islam. We will later on go to this. And I see, you know, it's just better. It's working. The family relationship in Islam. So the second thing was, I saw that people who had a lot of children, and Islam is also stressing this, are more happy, not as lonely as people who have only a few children. Why in the West they have now so many problems with that they have no children? Why? Because this idea of living a life for fun and so on contradicts the family life. Because freedom does not mean to take no responsibility for anything. And this is what a lot of people think. Freedom is often, even if so, nobody commits, uh, if nobody uh, confirms this and says, yeah, it's like this, what you are saying is right, Mr. Vogel. No, nobody says this. But it's even if subconscious, in, subcon in your, subconsciously it's in your head, freedom is to not take responsibility for anything. And so, when you have kids, you have a lot of responsibility. You see these problems in, this, in the society. Then, I saw another thing. I saw that people who are religious, and I admit it, people who are religious, even when they are Christians, they have more hope than people who are not religious. So, I was thinking, I have to think about religion. What, what about religions? And in the same time, you know my favorite boxer, or one of my favorite, he was maybe really my favorite boxer, I had a lot, but was Ivan the Holyfield. I just want to mention this in between. 
And you know Ivan the Holy Field, he is a strict Christian. 